Hello, children. Here we have Peter Richardson reading The First Obelisk and the Eye of the Falcon. Jack and Mary, Jack and Mary. Once upon a time in a land far, far away, the Egyptian creator god Ra sat in the sky. He loved to shine his sunshine rays down onto his lovely children of Earth. He decided he would like some little godchildren of his own, which brings us to one of his sons, Geb. Geb was a bit of a layabout, with a fertile imagination and thrust for life. He loved to cuddle up to his beautiful wife, Nut, who coincidentally was Nuts, but she was a lovely girl who liked all the good things in life. One day, Geb and Nut's longtime friend Thoth and his girlfriend Matt came over for a barbecue. They were all having a great time discussing astronomy, literature, and that week's edition of TV Burp, when Thoth changed the subject and asked, So, Geb and Nut, have you thought about having any kids yet? This question made Nut beam a smile as she always wanted some little sunlight children running around her. But Geb got a little hot under the collar and agitated. No, no, he uttered and squirmed. We are happy as we are. Nut's face dropped in heart-aching anguish. Both saw this and said, Ah, oh, you guys, I feel if you have a son, he'll be the most precious, powerful leader there's ever been. Which enraged Geb like you would not believe. He went mad, cursing Nut, saying, Nut, you will give birth to no son on any day of any year, nor at night time, nothing. You are cursed. You are not having my son taking over my job. May I? <laughs> Geb has some sort of control issues where he did not want to relinquish any of his power. I think he had small man issues too. Thoth, being a deep thinker and moderator, a real Kofi Annan of his day, thought, Hmm, no birth on any day of any year, not even at night when Sun Ra is sleeping. Hmm, mm, by Jove, I got it, to be sure. Later that night, Thoth went over to chat with the moon god, Khonshu, who was deliriously happy after partying all night long with his moon goddess friends, Diana, Re, Hecate, Dewisri, Mano, and Artemis. Khonshu was loved up to the max, drunken with emotion, very tired but wanting more. So when Thoth said, Hey, Khonshu, you want to play a game of Sonnet? Senet is an ancient board game similar to chess. At this point, I was just furious at Geb. All I could think of was, I want a baby. My hormones were ready and that vile pig of a husband of mine was just not going to scratch the itch of my desire. So, I was all in support of both trying to reverse this curse. Conchu, who was in great spirit and a legendary gambler, said, Hey, sure, man. This made this little interest. As you folk are the maintainer of the universe. I think you will find that it's multiverse, but carry on anyways. 
I bet a piece of my moonlight for a piece of your universe. Winner takes all. Thoth grinned and said, Sure, why not? So the most important titanic epic battle of senate or chess took place. They toed and froed and ebbed and flowed and slugged it out until their minds explode. And in the end, Thoth said, Checkmate, I gotcha. So Thoth got a bit of moonlight as his prize. Kanshu, being a foolish gambler, would not admit defeat, and kept challenging Thoth to double or quits. Thoth just trounced Kanshu, game after game after game. It was like a senate massacre. By the time Kanshu threw his hands in the air and said, Enough! No more! I'm going to sleep now! Thoth had amassed Five whole days of constant moonlight to attach to the end of the year. As these extra days were outside of Geb's time, his curse did not apply to those moon days. That Thoth, <laughs> he's a clever son of a gun. So, I used my feminine wiles and seduced Geb. He was just relieved that I had lifted the sex ban. I issued after his manic outburst. He didn't suspect a thing. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, a dirty dog still needs a bone and a tickle on his tongue. And nine months later, just happened to be the end of the year with the new extra five days of moonlight that Thoth had won in the game of Senet. On day one of the new moon days, Nut was blessed with her beautiful baby boy called Osiris. Osiris turned into the Egyptian god of the underworld, usually depicted with green skin, suggests he has reptilian Anunnaki heritage, like in the Sumerian Babylon Vader's Aztec Zulu heritage of reptilian gods and creators. Osiris was often depicted with ram horns, suggesting he was one of the royal elite of the Chittahori Anunnaki. Just ask Credo Mutua. Oh, I was so proud of my bouncing baby boy. On this second moon day, Nut gave birth to her second son, Harmaket. He symbolizes the morning sun rising in the sky. He is associated with the heart of the lion. Give the people power. The Rasta man and Harmaket say, seize this hour. Harmaket is the sphinx at Giza. My second boy, such an enlightened child, so strong and proud. On the third moon day, Nut gave birth to her third son, Set. He was the Egyptian god of chaos who embodied the principle of hostility, if not of outright evil. Lord of the thunderous storms. Oh, I love all my children equally, of course. But young Set has been a bit of a handful. He was diagnosed with ADHD at a young age. As soon as I gave him some orange squash, he just thrashed and fought with such sibling rivalry. His eyes would just blaze over like the light had gone out. He can be such a beautiful child of many amazing colours. I love all my children. On the fourth day, Nut had her first baby daughter, Isis. Ah, oh, my sweet little princess, the apple of my eye. She is a true earth mama. At this point, I was really tiring from my four-day labour, and I still had one more to go. <laughs> the fifth and final day, Nut gave birth to Nephites. Ah, oh, my second lovely daughter. Such a kind-hearted sister, who through thick and thin worshipped and took care of her eldest brother, Osiris, or as she called him, Oz Oz Broston. Over the years, the five children grew up well, learning everything they could. As was custom at the time, because the god gene pool was very shallow, the brothers and sisters had to marry each other. Osiris married Isis, and Set married Nephitus. 
Poor old Harmaket didn't have any girl to cuddle up with. But he invented the electric guitar and wrote the song Purple Haze and kissed the sky every morning at dawn. He later passed down that god particle to Jimmy with the knowledge of the wah pedal, the Hendrix chord, and the first rays of the new rising sun. Cyrus went travelling from country to country and town to town, expanding the vision of his kingdom of wisdom. He left his wife and sister Isis to take care of business at home. She ruled over Egypt well. All of this drove their younger brother Set crazy. He wanted to be king of Egypt and the world. He got wound up into a tight ball of rage and hatched an evil plan with the queen of Ethiopia, Aso. Aso talked sweetly but pumped out venomous deeds behind her words. She acted like the saccharine serpent. Aso and Set grouped their resources together to get a 72-member gang where they planned to destroy Osiris and become the rulers of Egypt, the world, and the multiverse. Oh, my third boy, Set, took a bad choice here. He let his tiny speck of hate run wild and consume him. He became a radical warmonger who needed his thoughts eradicated. I kept saying to him, No more war, not in my name. It's time to break the chain. Did he listen? Huh, not a chance. He was a real Saint Jupid. Seth and Aso sent one member of their gang to secretly measure the proportions of Osiris's body. Well, of course Osiris was flattered by the measurements. He thought he was going to get some spectacular claws made for his beautiful manly physique. That husband of mine... Through all of his beauty, he had one hell of an ego on him. He was so idiotic to get tricked like that. Set through a huge party inviting all the gods, demigods and human elite to it, where they celebrated, feast and danced into the night. <laughs> Set brought out this big wooden chest encrusted in jewels lined with gold. It was awesome. Set made an announcement. <laughs> hey, everyone. Try getting this chest to do have a fist to the best gets to keep it. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying this party. I think it rocks like hell. <laughs> Come and get in the chest and try. <laughs> All the guests and members cheered. And one by one, they all tried to squeeze in the chest. Some were too big, some too small. But of course, Osiris was the perfect fit. When Osiris got in the box, the crowd knew immediately Osiris was the winner. It fit like a glove. But while Osiris was gloating inside the chest that he has the perfect body for every occasion, Set and his gang jumped on the box and nailed Osiris inside. The party and the game was over. The crowd were dispatched off by the gang because they were not ready. Will you be ready? Seth poured molten lead until there was no more soul shining through the cracks. Osiris was gone, died in his 28th year of his reign as king of Egypt. Join us next in Jakanari. First obelisk and the eye of the falcon to find out what will happen next. Will Osiris descend to be king of the underworld? What will Isis do? Will Set and Veil Mar of his evil plan? And what does this have to do with the rainbow mandrels? Find out next on Jack Norrie.